it's Carla. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be talking about wash. So let's start first with what is wash. Let's answer that question. So wash, um, if, I would be, if I would explain it in my own words, it's opaque watercolor. It's basically watercolor, but it's opaque. You cannot see. You can layer um, colors on top of one another and you won't see the bottom layer. Um, you treat it as if it's acrylic. Uh, it's it also dries in a matte finish, so that's um, I would say the big difference between painting with watercolor and painting with wash. So watercolor, when I paint in it, it feels very airy, very dreamy. While with um, wash, um, it's very vibrant. It's like painting with poster color, actually. Um, so I think that's how I would I would explain the difference between watercolor and wash. How did I get started with gouache? So I've been seeing a lot of Studio Ghibli Paint With Me videos in YouTube and they are so, so beautiful. I was enchanted by them and I thought, why not give it a try? I have a gouache set um, that I got, I think, last year, early, uh, late last year. And I haven't been using it as much, but I was so inspired when I saw all of these um, Studio Ghibli um, gouache paintings and I decided to give it another shot to keep using it and now I think it's so um, there's a great satisfaction in learning this new medium because it takes a lot of time to layer and I feel that the way I painted with watercolor um, I had to deconstruct it in order for me to paint with gouache and get the results that I want not a gouache expert um, there's a lot of artists out there that are super duper talented with using this medium but I'm here to just give you um, a rundown of what I use and what you need if you're gonna get started with gouache so beginner tips all right let's get started all right so let's start with what are you gonna need if you are going to paint with gouache so let's start with paint so for paints, um, there's two options that you can use to not for two options. Um, you can go with the pan set or you can go with shoes. So it's the same option that you have when you're going to paint with watercolor. Um, so for pan, I have this Hemi Mia gouache set. I got this um, late last year. It's it comes in I think what is this um, eighteen. 18 colors? Is it 18 colors? Yes, 18 colors and 30 ml gouache. This actually um, costs around 700 to 800 pesos when I bought it last year. So it's actually pretty, pretty good with the amount of paint and the colors that you have. This is a good beginner set. So if you're looking for one set that has it all, this would be a good set to start with. Um, my only issue with this is that when I uh, remove each, when I remove the cover of each of the jelly cups, um, when I got it, it was actually pretty moist. But after some time, it's super dry now, so you can see that the paints are already like cracking. It's all cracked. And what I do before I use this is to spray it first with water. I have a water spray here. There you go. Yeah. I have a water spray. I spray this with water um, when I'm going to use it. There. That way, when I um, want to use my paint, I don't have to scrape it off because it's too dry. So I guess that's the only issue I have with this is that it it's dry and you have to prepare your paint before you use it. This is the mixing palette that comes with the Hemi gouache set. So funny enough, I don't know if this is only in because of my set. I don't know if this is just um, my issue. It doesn't close. <laughs> See, it doesn't really close. It opens when I whenever I close the other side, the other side will open. So it never really fully closed, and maybe that's why my paints are so dry. Um, so now we go to tubes. So paint tubes. For paint tubes, I am using 
Arteza. Arteza gouache in shoes. So these ones, um, Arteza doesn't ship to the Philippines. So I got this from a local shop called Art Caravan. They have an Instagram. I'll put it. I'll put the link um, in my description box. And they have actually a very good selection of the colors. But I only got like a few colors that I like. And now that I think of it, I should have gotten more neutrals like white. Uh, black, gray, so next time. It would be nice if I have, if they offer like a set, set of gouache because that would be easier for beginners to, to buy if you can just get like the 12 basic set or like 24 sets but um, for, for now they have individual tubes so you have to buy this one by one. If I would compare the price of Arteza with like designer gouache of Winsor & Newton and everything, this one is also budget friendly. The Winsor & Newton is pretty, pretty expensive. But I haven't tried them so I'm not sure about the comparison in terms of quality. But if you're a beginner, like myself, this is a good um, gouache brand to try out. So when I first got started with wash, I was using this one, the Strathmore Mix Media paper. I started off small, so all my papers are actually just on um, postcard size or this kind of size. So I don't have like A4 or bond paper size of um, gouache works. So this one is one of those uh, mixed media which are quite suitable for gouache. The paper texture is very smooth and it is uh, 300 GSM so it's 8 by 6 which is a good size. Another one that I use is um, this one is just a sheet of hot press paper. Hot, uh, I think this is a Fabriano hot press paper that I got in a full um, sheet and then I cut it up into smaller pieces. This one's actually pretty big. I'm still going to cut this before I, I use it for a painting. So hot press paper is actually really, really good and it's really made for gouache. I know a lot of um, gouache artists use hot press paper because of the smoothness and it is thick, thick enough to have to withstand a lot of layers. I'm also using scratch papers of watercolor, old watercolor papers. Um, as long as the texture is not as rough, I think we can still use this for gouache practice. And then lastly, I think a lot of people are curious what I use for some of my gouache work in IG. So I use this craft paper. I got this in Sekaido in Japan. And what I like about this is that it's just so, it's the color, the craft paper and the thickness of it because it's actually like a postcard so if you paint on this you can get, like, just give it away and it's already a nice postcard for a friend. Now we go to brush. Our brush, for my brush I use um, these brushes and I think oh, there's one more. There you go. These are my brushes for gouache. So, so the first one um, is actually, the first one is silver brush. This is a silver brush, um, silver silk 88 round size six. So I just got this um, in art bar. The tip is very, very soft. This is also suitable to be used for watercolor, but I also use it for gouache when I want to paint large areas very quickly. So I like this. It's not super soft that I will struggle with the um, creaminess of the gouache paint, but it's nice. It's very easy to, to use and to control the brush when you're painting large areas. So next up, we have this brush and it looks um, very, very used. So I use this a lot, especially for acrylic and gouache. The hair is actually a lot harder than the silver brush but this is also a, this is a size 5 so it's also a nice um, brush to use when you're covering large areas. I 
and I like that I have used this for a lot of works and the hair is just it's still okay it hasn't like fall off or become so unruly so this is a good brush this is called the come come memory point handmade in Germany so this is their one of their brushes they have a lot of um, brush types uh, they sent this one to me and so far as you know I'm a big big fan of round brushes so this is one of the brushes that I find very useful in my arsenal next one I have a flat brush and I don't usually use flat brushes so this one is pretty okay when you're painting um, like a sky or you need to, to quickly cover a large area uh, I got this also in Sakaido. It's I think very it's just synthetic, and I like the size. It's perfect for the practice wash works that I'm doing, and since I'm just painting like postcard size work at the moment, this is good for filling out a lot of areas. I have my detail brush. This detail brush, you can see, it's super, it's tiny. It's size one. I have other. I actually have other sizes of the The brushes that I ordered in Shopee, though it doesn't absorb a lot of paint, so you have to mainly use this for just details like little dots here and there, or um, if you're making some lines, some strokes, you can use this, but if you're really like painting or covering a certain area, it doesn't really. Um, get to spread the paint. So that's the problem with this, but it's a good detail brush and it's super duper pointed, so you can really get into those little um, little details of your painting. So, uh, what are the other things that I use for gouache painting? So, I use washi tapes. <laughs> Washi tapes are super duper useful. I, I, I tape the edges of my paper so that when I when the paints are dry and then I can remove them, the borders are very, very clean. So I can do that with, with gouache, I think. Um, except for this paper, this paper actually like tears a bit, which is quite disappointing, but um, it works very well with hot press paper as well as the mixed media paper. And as you know, I have my handy um, watercolor spray. You're actually gonna need this if you're if you want if you're painting for a long period of time, because um, when you squeeze gouache in your mixing palette, and then you're painting for a long time, your gouache is going to get um, dried up. So this one is a an easy way to reactivate your paint. And that's it. We are done. You can now get started with gouache. So don't forget to leave your comments below if you have any questions, any recommendations. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video.